What is going on guys? Welcome to your 24th CSS tutorial and this tutorial is probably going to be a pretty quick one because I want to go over two quick properties of CSS and that's the width and the height and actually I want to talk to you guys about a couple more things I just remembered so let's go ahead and uh, get started the first thing we need is of course something on our website so let's go ahead and let's add a, a heading 4 we never work with heading 4's and it's a good heading you know it's a fourth one deserves some respect so let's what's popping into my head what am I going to type my name's Forrest Forrest Gump close enough uh, you know a couple typos but hey who's counting so let's go ahead and um, actually I want to give this a pretty cool color scheme so let's go ahead and uh, make the background red and the text white I always like that color scheme so background color red and the color of the text which is color white so let's go ahead and save this and see what we got my name's Forrest Forrest Gum now we can see a couple things are happening automatically right now by default our browser sets the height of the element equal to the height of the text which you know it should but it also sets the width of the element equal to the width of the website so check this out whenever we resize our website our element size changes so I mean maybe this is what you're going for but maybe it's not so depending on the size of the website we really don't know how big that elements gonna be and whenever I create websites I usually wanna specify the width of things so in order to change that up or you know maybe you like it like this okay then leave it but if you don't and they're gonna come across a lot of times where you don't you're gonna wanna set the width and the height explicitly so first of all let's go ahead and change the width of that so it's not just default the entire length of the website because when you're making a background for a header or something like that it looks kinda weird to have all that extra space so in order to do that you need to type in the property width and go ahead and set this something like oh, let me see six let me go 350 will probably fit nicely 350 pixels so now you can see whenever we save this instead of having the header background automatically span across the entire website no matter when we resize our website the header stays 350 pixels constantly so that's it's like easier to manage and it's easier when you're designing a website when you know what's gonna happen rather than just letting your browser take care of it so anyways um, people adjust the width a lot more than they adjust the height but there may come across a time or you may come across a time where you want to adjust the height um, to like a hundred pixels or something I typically don't mess with the height whenever I'm working with elements but um, some people do so anyways here's a quick example of you adjusting the height um, it looks pretty dumb right now and for in general you don't want to mess with it but you know now you guys know what the height does so that is what I want to talk to you guys in this tutorial width and height and now that I have some extra time I guess I might as well show you guys this you know a couple tutorials ago where I talked to you guys about border and it was like border width and border style and border color and it was three lines all for the border and it kinda you know that's way too many lines just for one property so if you want a consistent border across the entire thing here's a nice little shorthand that you can do if you just go ahead and type border and not width or not style or not color or anything like that just border you can go ahead and type all the values on one line and CSS and your browser are smart enough to recognize this so border let's go ahead and set the three pixels solid for the style in black so this will save you a little extra time uh, when coding you don't have to span this across three lines if you just go ahead and save this and refresh your border is gonna know or excuse me your browser is gonna know that that is what you want for a border and actually there this is a uh, whenever you have something like top left right and bottom there is probably a shorthand technique that you can use for that or when you have like border style border color um, or you know different properties for the same element there's usually a shorthand uh, where you can you know skip a step or a shortcut with that as well so even though I'm not going to teach you all the little shortcuts whenever 
you think, hmm, there's probably a shortcut for this. Well, there probably is. So if you want to look them up, uh, it might save you some time. But anyways, I just want to throw that out there, let you guys know that there are shortcuts out there for doing things. I just don't have time in my tutorials to walk you through everyone, or I'll, I'll be here, here for like the next 80 years teaching you guys all a little shortcuts. So anyways, thank you guys for watching uh, this tutorial. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to be talking about in the next tutorial, but I guarantee it'll be amazing. So... How can you not watch the next video with that guarantee? So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll smell you guys later.